Uh, if you want to open your Bibles, you can turn to uh, Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, I'll be taking a look at uh, verses 13 through uh, 21 here. But over the holiday, I got some uh, uh, earbuds, and I tried to listen to podcasts or s- sermons or, or whatever anytime I, I run, but I lost that routine because my head, but they weren't working. And so I got some yesterday, I went for a jog, and this sermon uh, by Sean Jeffries from 2015. He came here to do a gospel meeting for us, uh, came up on my phone, and I just wanted to kind of share a lot of the thoughts that he kind of, or uh, several of his points that he made. But I'd really encourage you just to go listen to it. Uh, I think it's entitled, uh, How Does God Measure Success? It's from 2015, Sean Jeffries. Really good sermon to listen to because I'm not going to do it justice this evening because it's going to be probably very short. So, uh, But let's read... Um, Luke chapter 12, starting in verse 13. Um, it's the parable of the rich fool, a very familiar story that I think most of us have probably read uh, one time or probably many. But starting in verse 13, it says, Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I'll do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul! You have many goods laid up for for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then, Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So it is he who lays up, so is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. Uh, As we can read here, or as we can, as we kind of read through this parable, um, Jesus is really trying to teach this person, this person in the crowd that came to talk to him, that asked him to help him through this arbitration with his brother. He probably had a very good reason uh, why he wanted to bring this up to to Jesus, but he's really trying to help this man uh, understand that life doesn't consist of the abundance of things that we possess, and he does it through this parable of the rich man. And some of the things I want to kind of just point out here are just how Jesus describes this rich man. Uh, there in verse uh, 16, he kind of describes him just as that, a rich man. And to all of us here today, you know, if we were to try to measure success in any way, just saying just that in and of itself, him being a rich man, we'd say, man, that he's, he's successful, right? He's got everything that he needs. He has everything he, that he wants. Uh, but he also goes on and describes him or kind of describes his job or his profession kind of where he says he yielded plentiful and he describes this crop. And so he's successful at, at, at bearing crops and having all of those things uh, to where he needed to create larger barns and to store up these, these crops. And, you know, for, again... A lot of the, the things that we as, as people today, the, the world today, describes successfulness. I'm sorry, I keep having, these glasses are new to me, and I, <laughs> I feel like I'm old. It's like, I can't, I, can't, I can't see you, I can see you. So I apologize, I'm not used to this, but uh, I got to read this, though. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Jesus describes, you know, uh, the success of his crops, and he's describing this plentiful man, this, this, this rich man, and, and that's what we as today can kind of see success. And he goes on to describe uh, another thing there in verse 19, uh, where he says, and I will say to my soul, so you may, you have many goods laid up for many, take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And when I, when I kind of heard that, take your ease, it's something that I think as success, the way that we describe it, we almost think of, well, if we can get to that point of where I can take it easy, I can just go and you know do whatever I want. I have made it in life. I can go travel. I can do uh, you know 
I can go see my kids whenever I want. I can go see my grandkids whenever I want. Not that I have any, but I'm just looking at people and I can see that y'all have grandkids. <laughs> but uh, it's when we get to that point of taking it easy, being merry, drinking, be merry, ease, eat, drink, and be merry. A lot of us probably did that this past couple of days. I actually have a birthday on December 26th, and so we had a Christmas Eve dinner, merry, having food and, you know, being together. Christmas Day, eating, drinking, being merry. Wasn't drinking anything bad. I was drinking just a lot of sodas and stuff. And then today, or yesterday, during my birthday, eating, drinking, being merry. A lot of ease. A lot of things that can measure success and make us think that we've gotten to the point to where we've done what we needed to do. But this is just a, a, a description, I think, of what the world thinks of success. And what we really need to try to learn from this parable is what is, how does God, how does Jesus describe success? And so if we continue to read, or if we look back at the verses here, uh, starting in verse 20, verse 20, it says, But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then those who, <clears throat> then whose will those things be which you have provided? So, he, so, he, so is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. So number one, point number one here is like, you got to be rich towards God. You know, your rich, richness is, doesn't consist of all of these physical things that we have here. A lot of us probably got a lot of things over this holiday. And all that's great. There's not, definitely nothing wrong with it. But, you know, I, we go, I always try to instill in my kids, it's like it's not about these physical things that we have and we try to recognize that the the importance of it is within the, the time that we're spending with our family but we also know that it's not just about these physical things that we have and so we have to be rich towards God the second thing is that Jesus almost kind of describes here is that this person this rich man doesn't recognize the brevity of life he doesn't realize that our life is short it goes by very quickly. He's saying, you fool, tonight your soul will be required of you. And I think a lot of times we as individuals, I, you know, myself, have, and, you know, somebody that kind of does that as well. It's like, I don't recognize how short our lives is until I look at my kids and see how quick they're growing up or look around and it's, you know, 12 years later. Life goes by very quickly and uh, it doesn't, you can't turn that time back, unfortunately. And the third point here that I'd like to try to just uh, get across here is that he, he, lacked, he lacked to understand what was valuable to him. In the story, we, we read that he was storing up all of these goods within these barns, and he was really trying to do something. He, was trying, he felt like he was doing something to store up something that was valuable to him that was going to provide for him. But in the end, what was the only thing that he could take with him? It was his soul, right? It was the only thing that was really valuable. And so his priorities were not really going in the right direction. His priorities of trying to, to store up his crops, Jesus was asking, well, who's going to take care of those things now that you're gone? Are we doing those things, those same things? It's like I a lot of times think to myself, am I reading enough? Am I praying enough? Am I spending en enough time with God? Are my priorities set straight? Or am I making excuses to say, you know what, I'll just do that tomorrow. I mean, there's been times where I prioritize possibly my hobbies before that, or maybe my job. I think I need to do this instead of going to, to evening services. Or maybe I say, you know what, I'm gonna maybe try to start uh, doing more for the church. I'll try to start teaching more once my kids go to college and I'll have more time to do those things. How many of us have said that, that you know what, I'll do that later. And we're not recognizing that our lives are short and that we don't have that much time to do the things that we want to. I mean, we need to do those things now because the only thing that we're going to take, I wish I could take my kids with me and my wife, you too, Shannon. <laughs> I say a lot about my kids. But in the end, we're all we're taking with us are our souls, right? So we need to do those things today. So if tonight you're not right with your soul, or you need to be baptized, or you have something that is bothering you, and you need the prayers of the church congregation here, I'd encourage you to come as we stand and as we stand.